Hello everyone and welcome to the RV Inspection and Care podcast and video. I'm Dwayne and I'm a certified RV inspector and today we're going to be talking about 30 amp versus 50 amp RVs. Now this is actually pretty important to understand because when you do, you'll know which kind of RV fits you best and you'll understand how it uses power. So now when we look at this on the surface, 30 amps versus 50 amps in an RV, well, you know, it might seem like a 50 amp RV just handles a little less than twice the power of a 30 amp RV, right? Well, if that's what we think, we would be wrong about that because it actually provides three and a half times more power in the 50 amp RV than you can actually get from a 30 amp RV. Now that's a little bit of a mystery and we're going to explain that later on as we get through this. But first of all, let's talk about some of the electrical terms that we're going to cover here because this is so difficult for a lot of folks to visualize. I mean, really, what are amps and what are volts anyway? it can get kind of confusing and it sounds a little technical, but really it's not that difficult to understand if you can picture it in your mind. Now, let's use an illustration to do that. And the illustration we're going to use is water and a water hose. All water hoses can conduct water through them, right? But some hoses are bigger than others and therefore they can move more water through them. For instance, think about the difference between a garden hose and a fire hose. Now, obviously the fire hose can move an awful lot more water through it than you can get out of a garden hose. But keep in mind that to get water out of any hose, you've got to have some pressure behind it, something that's actually moving that water through the hose. And the more pressure behind the water, well, the more water is going to come out or the faster it comes out on the other end. But ultimately, it's the size of the hose that will determine the potential for the full amount of water that can come out. And that's why you get a lot more water out of a, a fire hose than you do a garden hose. Now, let's, using that illustration, apply that to volts and amps. And think of the volts in the electrical terms as the water pressure, what's moving the water through the hose. Then think of the amps as the size of the hose itself, all right? Now, with that illustration in mind, we're going to go to one simple equation, and that's going to be the, the end of the technical stuff that we're gonna get into. And the equation is this. If you multiply the amps times the volts that you're using, it tells you how many watts is being used. And here's our last definition. Watts is simply a measurement of how much power is being consumed. And the watts is really what's going to help us here. So like if we use this equation with a 30 amp RV and all 30 amp RV outlets that you plug into at the campground are going to be moving electricity at 120 volts. They're going to be sending one line of electricity coming into your RV at 120 volts. So if you multiply 30 amps, that's the full capability of what can be moved into your RV times 120 volts that's pushing it in, that gives us 3,600 watts of potential power that you can use in a 30 amp RV, 3,600 watts. Now to understand that and put that in perspective, let's mention that just one air conditioning unit on an RV 
often takes 3,000 watts of power just to start, and then it will run on something like 1,800 to 2,000 watts of power continuously. Now remember, we only have 3,600 watts that we can consume in a 30 amp RV. So what that means is that's why you usually only see one air conditioning unit on the top of a 30 amp RV, which is usually travel trailers and small fifth wheels. Now let's move on from there to a 50 amp RV and the 50 amp RV outlet that you plug into at the campground, it is going to explain how all this extra power happens because a 50 amp RV outlet provides two lines of service coming into the RV instead of just one, like the 30 amp RV uh, outlet does. So now let's use our formula again. If we have 50 amps of power at 120 volts, we multiply that together. That gives us 6,000 watts of usable power. However, we have two lines of power coming into a 50 amp RV instead of just one line. So we have to double that 6,000 watts of power. And that means we have 12,000 watts of power that can be used in a 50 amp RV. Wow, <laughs> that is a huge difference. 12,000 watts of power in a 50 amp RV as compared to 3,600 watts of power in a 30 amp RV. And this explains why you see bigger RVs that have 50 amp electrical services like uh, fifth wheels, big fifth wheels and motor homes. It explains why you see two ACs or air conditioners on the top and sometimes even more because at 12,000 watts of capable power, they can handle that. They can not only handle all the air conditioning power that's being consumed, they can actually run other high wattage devices at the same time and still be fine. However, on a 30 amp RV like travel trailers and small fifth wheels, if you are using your air conditioning up unit and to keep your, your RV cool, well then you're consuming 50 to 80% of your power, almost 80% when we're talking about uh, starting that air conditioning unit up and then 50% when it's running. Well, that means if you go plugging in a lot of high wattage devices, uh, into the AC outlets in your RV at the same time that your air conditioning is running, it wouldn't take an awful lot of that to reach the threshold, the maximum of that 3,600 watts of power that can be safely consumed. And once you go over that threshold, well, then most likely you're going to trip a breaker in the 30 amp RV because that's the safety device to keep you from overheating your wiring and perhaps even starting a fire in the RV. So now, what do we learn from all of this? Well, we learn a couple of things. Number one, if your RV is smaller, if you don't use the AC very much, you know, the air conditioning is just not something you use a lot, well then 30 amps is fine you're gonna be able to run a lot of things and do just fine in a 30 amp RV. There's no reason for you to pay extra to have the heavier gauge wiring. But if your RV is large and therefore has more area to cool and you're going to be in a place that's going to require these air conditioning units to run regularly and you like lots of those high wattage devices like washers and dryers and residential fridges and 
large microwaves and all of that, and you like to be running these things all together, well then a 50 amp service is going to be necessary at that point. Now I hope what we've covered here and what we've gone over will help explain 30 amp versus 50 amp RV. So it's a little bit more clear in your mind what we're talking about there. And hopefully it will also help you choose the RV that will work best for you and help you manage the power in that RV correctly. Well, that's it for now. Have safe and happy travels, my friends. Until next time. <music>